name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, here we are at the sixth Sunday of Easter. And the Easter readings are still full of wonder, not just because of the beautiful news of the resurrection itself, though, of course, these recountings of the resurrection events and their subsequent consequences and ramifications and experiences are obviously the main purpose. I also get a very strong sense as we move towards Pentecost that it has much to do with the human soul's natural longing and wandering about being drawn into the mystery and the wonder and a searching for the presence of the divine, both beyond as well as transcendent in our lives. And as we move onward towards the day of Pentecost, this sense of newness, this sense of wonder continues to build as it is noted very clearly, I think, in today's readings. It even begins with the collect for the day. It joins in the theme when it says, mentioning the idea of such good things as surpass our understanding. In Acts, we hear a mention of the believers being astounded, astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit has actually been poured out on the Gentiles. First thing I thought of was it's kind of like the Baptist being surprised to see the Episcopalians in heaven. And this event helps Peter realize that the Holy Spirit is available to everyone and the waters of baptism are available because of God's actions and not our deciding of who's in or who is to be shut out. Moving towards Pentecost is fully a moving forward in and with God's kingdom. Even the chosen psalm for the day has a feeling of movement to it. Miriam sings a beautiful new song as the people of Israel come to dry land after crossing the sea and escaping the pursuing army. Miriam's song is a song of joy, it's a song of wonder, joy in recounting the new and the marvelous acts of God bringing the people to freedom, setting them on their way to a new land, a new life, and a brand new joy in being in relationship with the God of mercy, the God of freedom, the God of justice, and the God of equity. Miriam echoes those things in her joyous song. Though it's not in our readings today, these are the same joyous themes that are sung again in a song by another Mary, the Theotokos, the mother of Jesus, when she is told of a new and good, wonderful thing that God is about to do. She sings out in joy and exultation that her spirit is rejoicing in God for the wonderful things the Almighty is doing. Again, just like Miriam, she mentions mercy in every future generation, equity for the downtrodden and the filling of the hungry with good things, with justice. It's a joyful song filled with remembrance of God's promises to God's people. And we also recall the memory of another Mary. Do you see a theme here with Mary's? The one who first sees and first proclaims the wonder, the majesty, and the glory of the resurrection. What an incredible moment of joy and wonder that must have been to hear Jesus say her name. Joy. This day's readings are filled with joy. And I think, I hope you agree with me that that's a good thing. But you know... We're all aware of the simple fact that we, always, that we do not always experience this exuberant singing, dancing, tambourine shaking, and trumpet blowing kind of joy. Life just doesn't always seem to keep the joyous and the delightful at the top of our living list. We are weighed down by cares, chores of everyday life, by illness, hardships of one kind or another abound in this life. 
expected or unexpected death as a way of bringing into our normal routine a brokenness. And yet, I and I suspect most of us have met people who are still capable of real joy in their lives, though others may have given up. And my question that I started to ask myself is, where does this joy come from? How can we joyfully experience God in our lives as we experience a horrifying, deadly pandemic? This is something we can all relate to at this point. As we hear the gospel today, there's an obvious clue letting us know it is Jesus' love has something to do with this joy. Remember? He says, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. And tells us, he then tells us to abide in his love. And why does he tell us to do this? He even says it. So that my, Jesus, joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. Now, I love this idea. It's marvelous. I'm all in favor of this idea. And yet, I along with some of you, I think, am well aware that this idea of abiding in love, even in Jesus' love, is not necessarily an easy thing for us to do all the time because it is a kind of love that requires an emptying of ourselves, a giving of something beyond, giving into something beyond our own desires, our own wants, our own needs. And to be honest with you, this is where I sat for most of the week, trying to figure out how the joy that is expressed in our readings today is actually possible on more than just a few of one-and-done shots of theological joy. Then, out of the blue, or out of the ether of the internet, if you will, Mother Kyle Isle sends me a little note saying, though she was sure my sermon was already in the can, and she was correct, only it was the trash can, she thought I might be interested in something that Bishop Marion Buddy, the Bishop of Washington, D.C., wrote. It was a short little piece, and it was entitled, I Call You Friends. And if you remember, that's a line that's in today's gospel lesson. And there it was even before I read the words of the bishop. Jesus, at the end of his command to his disciples today and to, and to us, to love one another as he has loved us, are the words, I call you friends. Wham. A little phrase, easily overlooked actually, because we always want to focus on the love one another part. And yet he says, I call you friends. The teacher says you are friends. The healer says you are friends. This miracle worker, this one who has been transfigured before three of his disciples, says you are friends. And I'm telling you, this is something new. This is something radical. And these are some of the last words that Jesus speaks to his disciples. Jesus meeting his followers where they are, living in the moment with them. No judgment, no requirements to meet. Think about it. Think of those that you name as friends. Friends in the deepest sense of abiding trusting and enduring in friendship. Jesus was not being casual about the idea of friendship, but rather speaking of friendship with special, real, if you will, spiritual depth. The ones where we just know that our friends care for us. This is the kind that has no dependence on what we can or cannot do for each other. We simply know that they care for us and have our best interests at heart. I know I've been privileged to experience that a couple times in my life. One of the times was when I was working in a different church. 
Actually, it was my first interim after retiring from the military. The sharing of mutual joys and frustrations created a friendship that endures to this day, and it's one of those friendships of joy and caring, you know the kind I mean. We may not see each other often or even speak to each other that much, but when we do, no time has passed, no need for words of explanation of why we've been silent. There's just an assuring presence of abiding and mutual friendship, care, and concern for each other. So as we hear the words of Jesus today, we hear the gift of friendship that he offers us, and yet at the same time, we know he's far more than a casual friend. This friendship grows out of the Easter message, the message of joy, the message is one of God again doing something brand new, demonstrating that there is great joy in the giftedness of being chosen. Remember, Jesus says, I chose you. Being fed, Jesus says to us again and again, take and eat. This is me. Being loved and have the joy of Christ's love in us. There is joy in crossing the sea to freedom. There is joy in the gift of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to end with the words of Bishop Buddy also. Bishop Buddy asks how we might live today and all of our tomorrows if we dared to believe that Jesus was at our side as our friend even more, that he calls us his friends and counts on us to love other people as he loves us and as he loves them. There is great joy in being called friend. Jesus invites us today, as always, to abide in his love as friends so that we may have the joy of his love. And as he says, have it fully. Amen.
Thank you.